Kiro did it more than once. And we'll see if he can do it again here in game number two. Mm. I think, I mean, Giannis, like I said, Hi. really the heavy lifting came out from other players on the team. Giannis wasn't a really big problem. There. Remember, energy, right, have not dropped a set. Yeah. In over a year. In competitive play, in online play. Do you think this is a set? This is a ruffle stomp. Really? I will call it a ruffles on now. If you anger, right, if you've ever seen that adapting like video where he gets angry in a game, can yes. you imagine how angry he was after that there? The whole team are like that right now. These guys are about to go off. You'll just see like super engage hard mode activate. You guys, you guys really have like, to come to Worlds because you get an opportunity to see the players uh, and, and we, get the, we get the chance all yeah. the time to see them at LAN. When... Uh, Panther, I went through three names. When Energy lose the game, mm. you, they are you see it on their face. And like as a commentator, like I, I give players their their oh, space. Yeah. I don't invade, but you watch from a distance. This team reacts very harshly. Energy Gosh. lose this match. I this this next one. If Energy wins, it is a. 20 minutes. If game. Cringe Crew wins, it kind of changes their season for me as a whole because I was looking yeah. at them as slipping down the list from around third, fourth position further down that list to around six or seventh right now with how they've been performing, even eighth. But that win against Energy was fantastic. I can't absolutely. take any credit away from them. Yeah, no, extremely well done. And yes, absolutely. We talk about Replicas being hot or cold. Feed the hot hand. Feed the hot hand. Yeah, but no. No? Yeah, but no. The reason I'm saying yeah, but no is because Cringe Crew banned Bacchus, right? Because they didn't want Rafa to have it. But by leaving Alquang open, Energy have shown they have an answer to Alquang. And its name is Sir Ket. Sure. Every time they've let Alquang through, they'll pick up Sir Ket mm -hmm. and adapting just plays Hunt the Dragon. Sure. The whole time. Sure. I, I, I Yes, I agree. That is that is objectively correct. But feed the hot hand. Give Al Kwong to, to, to Repikaz. He played out of his mind on a team fight oriented god. We know that he can do it on a single target like mm -hmm. Kali. Al Kwong going to fit in perfectly. Energy, they have, an, they, have, they have a reasonable response. But do they have an answer? Is the question Cringe Crew are well, asking? I do like the respect energy give them though by picking up Sol instead of a Kronos here. Obviously, Al Kwong going to be hunting for kills. They're still showing respect. Well, Sol is one of those respect picks. Stella burst can actually reveal the illusion because of the wider area. Mm -hmm. You get a bit of a big of an AOE to find him when he's trying to run away. At the same time, his disapparate buys him a little bit of extra time if he can get into that form to survive the ultimate coming out from Al Kwong. So wise pick. Yeah, a lot of options against the Al Kwong specifically. Cringe Crew will follow that up with a Neath. Obviously. Love the combination. Classic combo. And it's surprising to see that they didn't actually give him the Neath there, but I, I expect a circuit here. If I don't see a circuit, yeah, Cringe Crew should ban it because they should have the knowledge of watching these games themselves. I agree. This should be the circuit selection from Energy, uh, and then Cringe Crew will be able to do whatever they want. And we'll if Energy if don't pick circuit, I'd, well, be I'd be really surprised if they don't go circuit just because they've done it every time they've exactly, yeah. Alphong through. It'd be really surprising to me if they feel like this time around's a different story. You know? Yeah, no, it just makes perfect sense. So after the Soul Ryshin Circuit selection here, as we move into the jungle, as we move into the solo lane, rather in the support position, uh, Cringe Crew, even though they have the Sobek, I'd like to see the Guad Man, but there's Giannis. That's no. a wise Giannis, but not this time around. Like those snipes made too much of an impact that last game. They don't want to deal with it again. You know, you know, it's it's funny to me. I like. Those snipes, sure, they got an odd kill, they yep. got a gold fury here. I don't think Giannis won that game by any yeah. stretch of the imagination, but sometimes you got a band what pushes your buttons. And the funny thing about the Al Kwong, right? Uh, letting the Al Kwong through means he's not going to play right again. Yeah. That's the other benefit of doing this. You're like, okay, you'll probably play Al Kwong, otherwise you're going to give it to Adapting. You don't want to give Adapting Al Kwong. Mm. So we have to take Al Kwong, which means we don't get to play the rat that had a, such an amazing game. On top of that, Energy also have an answer to it. Well, we'll see. It's win, win, win for energy here. Picks and bans for me. I feel you. There's a Sylvanas, and 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 I, I I was thinking about seeing the Sylvanas ban instead of the Ares ban because Sylvanas has been the popular response to Al Kwong. Mm -hmm. Circuit has been Energy's response, and Energy are taking no chances, and they could have put both on the board. I mean, overall, Sylvanas isn't the greatest pick against the composition they've got here. The Roots as well as the Sobek as well. Gonna really cause them some problems because Sobek going to pull in Sylvanas and set Sylvanas into a world of hurt. Root follow-ups by Neef are available as well. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy game for a Sylvanas player. However, you know, the buffs are there, so we'll see. 
the big change for Repicas as they go out Kwong instead of the rat is a team fight orient is a team fight stuff, right? So without that option, Agni will provide a little bit more control for the team fights. Agni's a really good god with Ao Kwong though in the mid game. Very, very early season one world championships was one of the first times Ao Kwong really started to come into the fray. Now back in those days there was a composition from the Europeans being run, which was Agni and Ao Kwong in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. For the simple fact is at level two, the Ag Agni could actually aggressively dash find a stun at level three and have the Ao Kwong come in for the follow-up damage and could secure a kill. Very easy, quick, easy picks mm -hmm. for them. Obviously these days though, junglers are both in mid lane all the time for sure. the most part, so you don't see that as often but it's a pretty good batch situation. We'll, we'll certainly take a look and see how it works out. But for now, Cringe Crew will take the battlefield. Kiro on that Agni. So no snipes for him just yet, but zeros on his tier. That, that's a good play. That is indeed, and we'll see how it works out for him this game as well. So for the time being, in we go one more time and just watch how this one plays out. Yeah, we'll take a look at how everybody really winds up here. A little bit of wards coming out from Emilzy and watching where these two teams wind up. Energy have to respond to what Cringe Crew did to them last game around. We mentioned it in the picks and bans, and they made their way through the draft phase. How does Energy respond on the battlefield? Well, we'll see how they respond on the battlefield as time goes on, because re realistically, what I want to see is the duo lane here from Neath and the Sobek try and weather the storm of the Sylvanas and Sol early on. If they give up too much lane pressure here, F dot, what's going to happen is you'll see the rotations come out from adapting over and over again to this left-hand side. It's going to open up the left-hand side of the map in favor of energy because of that. Well, Raffer and Emelino, they're going to have the push. Yeah. I mean, there's no... Neath, yes. I, I, Neath, yes, we get it. Dance, do what you want. You have fantastic clear. But Soul Sylvanas, ain't nobody out clearing that. No, not for the time being anyway. So just keep an eye on how that one plays out. Mid lane, though, Agni and Repicas going to be up against... Sorry, Agni and Alquang, Repicas and Kero <laughs> going to be up against the Circuit and the Raijin. Early on, Raijin and Circuit will have a bit more better advantage here. It's going to take a little bit of an easier time than Kero, who has to step up to the wave with the Flame Wave to clear his time goes on. Yes, he'll take Path of Flames at level 1, but as time goes on, he can't really do that. And he's getting aggro by all the creeps. Yamin steps on it on purpose. Yeah, Kiro already half HP. Smart play coming out from Yamin. Smart from Kiro, though. You see how he just stood there, took it, and then Flame Wave back when he hit level 2. Very good from both of them, showing their experience. Just a lack of panic is really, you know, the important part there. Everybody on energy has some sort of response to Ao Kuang. You can see the sun, the sun blue Kong, if you will. Obviously adapting and Raffer we spoke about to death, but Yaman able to get away from Ao Kuang with the dash and then Emelito with the stellar burst. A yeah. lot of options to the invisibility out of the Dragon King right there. Dual lane on the other hand, clear certainly going the way of energy. Yeah, I mean, it's just what you'd expect. Actually, surprisingly enough, I say what you expect, but Shaggy Shake and Emelzy doing a good job of just slowing things down on that left-hand side early. I guess it's Sylvanas and Assault with all the poke pressure and push pressure they really have. They've done a good job on that side of the map of just keeping it Hanging in mid lane for now. Exactly. Just just waiting uh, just, just waiting to find their, their spot because em Emilzy, keep calling him Emilizy for some reason. Emilizy, is that what I said? Yeah, I, I called him that a couple of times in some uh, some team fights last time around. But but Emilzy can certainly set up Shaggy Shank very That's well. That's a weird child that Emilito and Emilzy have a child and it becomes Emilizy. Oh my goodness. Imagine having them both in the same lane. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'd watch it. Emil and Emil. Yeah, I would not cast it, but I'd watch it. The Emil brothers. I mean, it can't, get, the Chuckle Brothers. it can't get worse than the SCL team where Freya the support was supporting Paul on Freya. Yeah, that's a weird one. That was the worst. That's a weird one. Well, we had Jungler play mid lane last split. Keep an eye on adapting, though. Sure. He's level five now. Immediately, where's he rotating to? To the solo island. Zeros is overextended, but he did just hit level five. They can still force something if they can find it. And the kiss is perfect. Zig the combo zag. is good. The Lawbringer is better. Dead. But he should still have it absolute death. Adapting and, and, and friends were in short was going to go down, but just, just enough first blood going the way of energy. Yeah, the Lawbringer was the big one, though, overall there. The yeah. Lawbringer was fantastic coming out from zeros. The only problem with it was you still get hit by the ultimate as you're doing it, so the dot damage was enough. And here, here's the deal, here's the deal, here's the deal, here's the deal when it comes down to the Ao Kuang versus the Shirket. Adapting 
has made the first play. Repikas's big claim to fame, the real reason why Repikas was able to get off to that start was he set the pace of the game uh, last time around. Yeah, but the difference is there's jungle options. Like, Al Kwong is not the one that kind of sets the pace of a exactly. game. Exactly. It's a circuit that works. Exactly. So, and this is one of the reasons why you see them picking the circuit. Not only is it seems to be decent against Al Kwong in terms of knowing that where the stylistic choice is going to be, it's cool this time around inside. Ex that's, that's exactly what I was pointing out. Repikas can do what he can to find these individual kills, but when it comes down to it, he's going to take a little while longer to get his plane running. Adapting on the other hand, he's just able to roll a blade right on through the enemy as soon as he hits level 5. Well, with the level 5s online, now level 6 actually for Repikas this time round. He's not taking his first trip back to base just yet. Not going for the mobility option, so he's definitely going for the farm orientated game this time round. And he's going to be all on the one of the world champions adapting to set the pace of this game. And he did so at the yes. start. He's just going to continue doing that now. I want to potentially see him look at Neath as Shaggy Shank over on the left-hand side. Agni's not an easy target to pick, though. I will say that Agni's not the easiest one to really collapse onto, especially with the escape of the Path of Flames and the stun. Yeah, I mean, Suket does have a lot of options, but... Still, Agni got though number one. There's Raijin up at the ultimate. He's trying to find right. damage, but he's getting rained on. He guessed right. That was the key. And Yamin actually got ulted there by the Al Kwang. It's a one-for-one -one trade. But Kiro goes in so deep for this kill. The rotation from energy is here. And Kiro's going to fall down as well. Double kill for the jungler. Adapting 3-0-0 three, zero, zero this early on. And what you actually saw there was a big play coming out from Yamin more than anything else on that one. It was a simple rotation from adapting, but Yamin to guess of where the ultimate went. He had five the first shot, it connected. The second one was illusioned, mm -hmm. and Yamin knew which way Repi went. He guessed correct, and the prize was more kills. I mean, you got to get, you got to just take those shots. Absolutely. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You miss. You fire another shot. Exactly. You got four of them. <laughs> yeah. You got four of them. Except one down. Zero's invade. poked out a little bit off of the invade. But Half HP. Steal the blue buff on that side, which is good for him. However, Adapter now coming over here as well. And with Dimmy still giving chase, Rep Zero's in trouble. Yeah, he's in a lot he's of dead. trouble. Adapting finds the kiss and the zigzag. 400. Five minutes on the clock and say? four kills for adapting. What did I say? What did, what did I say? I knew what energy, did we say? energy always do. Like, if they lose a single game, they've only dropped one or two games. They've never lost a set before. The last time, actually, the last time they actually lost one set was against Paradigm at Super Regionals for Worlds. That was the last time they dropped a set. In online play, they have not lost since summer last year. And when it comes down to it, energy always respond to these to these losses with such fervor. Anger. The, with the, like, well, anger. That's, that's what it feels like, anger. That's, a, that's what I was saying when, when I was getting into looking at the face of these players. Energy, they get mad. And who's the player that gets mad the most? Adapting. I'm looking at his scoreline right now. That's what I'm saying. They get offended when He's everywhere. you beat Look them. at him. Adapting with the kiss. Adapting with the shot over the top. Five kills for the jungler. Well, the pace of the game has definitely been set by the jungler. And now they can continue. Look at how he waves rotated around as well. Solo lane. Mm -hmm. Then kills in mid lane. Now kills in dual lane. Why is he doing that? Why not share the wealth a little bit more? Put every lane ahead. As a jungler, that's what your kind of job is. You either find one person to put ahead and make sure they can carry the game into the late game, or you try and put every lane ahead and be like, well, the late game, I can just sit back and have fun because you guys should all be good now. Zero's trying to make the turnaround oh. kill out of the Sun Wukong, doing a great oh. job. There's Repikas. He'll find kill number two for Cringe Crew. Very important kill over there in the solo lane. Very important, and it's mainly to get Repikas going in the mid-game department now. Exactly. Yes, it's only six minutes in, but give him a little bit more of an advantage to catch back up as well. Dimin didn't have a kill, though. If he would have had a kill, he would have got a bit of a shutdown bonus for some bonus gold. However, off the back of that, Energy looking at stealing the speed. Three on three on the speed buff. Three bombs down from Agni, so Kiro doesn't have any more options. Raffer stunned out thanks to the Neath ultimate, and that'd be that. Sprint on the side of Rafa, though. Very wise for him to pick up. The mobility is very important for his team. Escape the Yao Kuang. Escape the Fearlesses as much as they can. This sprint will really come in handy to get, especially a Sylvanas, out of bad situations. So now the invade on the speed didn't work out, so maybe the blue buff will. Ooh, nope, that's not going to work either. I believe that was secured by Repicast on top of that. Absolutely. Adapting just jumps forward, clearing out some of the minions. Good work from Repi there, just securing those buffs more than anything else. I guess three out, three men army of energy. Overall, because of that, Cringe could get advantage in terms of experience in the map now, because everybody else was farming on the other side of things. And the red buff as well, Shaggy Shank got that on the left, and mm -hmm. poor Demolito couldn't actually find it to steal on the salt. Yeah, there's nothing available. 
Smart plays coming out from Cringe Crew despite being down just a little bit. Five kills on adapting. It's fun to talk about it. It's nice to scream when there's a kill. It's but what do they do games. from here? Just keep the pace going. That's all they're really after here. Adapt seems needs to go back to base to spend a little bit of gold, I want to say. That. I didn't say how much gold in hand he had when we were hovering over them for a second. 1200. If he's got 1200, he's looking for the Jotuns and then the power spike of level 12. And the level 12 spike is a three level lead then over the Al Kwong. Speed buff, first of all, obviously. And then look to abuse it one more time. He he can choose any lane now. Pretty he can much choose I mean, any lane. He's got his pick of the litter. I'd actually look more often than not now to really focus on Neath. Realism for the Neath is it's easier to kill, as I said, than the Agony in mm -hmm. the mid lane. It's more likely to see three members of Cringe Crew in the mid lane than any other lane. And focusing on zeros, well, you hurt Tear fine, but Tear's still going to be Tear's time goes on. And Dimmy Sun Wukong will not carry you as hard as a soul will. And sure, you take out Shaggy Shank, the Neath not available. You're able to make a play onto an objective or something smaller. And the Neath Al Kwong combination, not there for the length of time that Shaggy Shank's going to be sitting on the bench. So, that, yeah, I, I agree. I'd like to see the Neath be the focus. It's, cl it's cl slowed down a second or two here for now, but I don't think it's a problem. Look at what he's got, though, adapting. Level 12, very quickly, takes Blink. Jotuns and Blink. Super aggressive. Oh, yeah. Also picks up a bit of crit, just to go with it, just to try and get those Deathbane procs a little bit more. Really looking to try and push this over. And that's important. The Deathbane doesn't crit by itself, so just having that tiny little bit brings in the, the RNG for energy. Mm. Oh, you yeah. liked that one, didn't you? Yeah. Mm, you've been working on that one for weeks after. I I, it's it. been I, it's been years. Well, dimmy has been forced to ult on this side here, and the World Weaver actually adapts his an award there. I don't think that was aimed for him, but it doesn't matter because Repicast has been dotted and dotted again and killed by Dimmy. Dimmy takes it away from adapting, and either way, the kill goes away so, yeah, of energy. That World Weaver was because he stepped yep. in the ward as Shaggy Shank was channeling the ultimate <laughs> through. I guarantee you that's what happened, and Shaggy's like, oh, damn. Oh, by the way, Sir Cat's coming. Oh, really? Well, it's too late now. We're still dead. Yeah, that, that fight goes a much different direction if Neath Ultimate hits the right target. But instead, Adapting makes the accidental clutch support play and gets out of jail. Really, really good work from Energy once more. Left hand side, though, Shaggy doing a good job of continuing to farm up here. Did get picked up, but Transcendence fully online and stacked. His lane opponent, though, has gone for the Doom Mob, which is a nice power spike for him. As once more, Energy return the attention to the speed buff here. Raffer trying to lead the charge, gets flipped into Kiro, stunned as well, but a fantastic ultimate. Avoiding that, here comes Yaman's shot onto Emilzy. Emily, he's going to go into the ultimate to protect himself, and Dimmy takes out Repikaz. And there goes Yaming, thunder crashing into it. One more. In his sixth kill of the game. They look for Zeros here, who gets pulled back in nicely from Rafa with that pull, and now surrounded to his Zeros. He falls down for the seventh kill of the game for adapting. Line him up, shut him down. Adapting just on a tear. Seven kills in ten minutes for the Swedish jungler. Just out of control right now, King Kenneth. I mean, they knew going into this game what was going to happen. Yeah. They've seen the picks and ban strategy before, and it happened again. Happened Look. again. Every time someone picks out Kwong circuit, and the circuit works every time. They've not had an answer to this a single time. But see, the the beauty of it is, is the circuit against the the circuit against the Kwong, It's not. Not necessarily about a straight matchup, okay? Exactly. It's not about the straight matchup. It's about what they both bring to the team in terms of online capability. Circuit comes on a lot quicker, for the most part, looks yep. at a little bit more early aggression. The Alquan can come on early, but requires more team setup than a Circuit does to really make that happen. So, at the same time, though, in the straight 1v1 matchup, Circuit has a little bit more escapability against an Alquang. At the same time, as that dot damage also plays a big part in shutting down the Alquang. It's just, again, routine. I, the job of the jungle is to, in some points, set the pace of the game. It's very pick-dependent, right? If you're a Thor, your job is to get the first kill, the second kill, and keep the jungler following you. When the Alquang is selected, you're not going to make the play at five. He's going to make the play at six. He's going to blink and go straight in on Repi, and Repi can't even respond in time. Double dots are on him, though, but a great play. He can't respond in time, but Kiro can. Jesus! So can Repi. With the turnaround kill, Repikaz finds one for him, uh, finds one for his mid laner. Too hot to handle. Cringe Crew that bite was all back. Kero. That was all Kero. That play was fantastic from him. Secured so much damage on the on the on both those two targets there, and it actually kept Repi alive because of it. Dapting wasn't as sneaky as he thought. 
Take a look at that ward vision right there. Is it right in the corner? Mm-hmm. Nice little pickup. However, Demi giving chase into Zeros, taking him away from the fight for now. As the Tinsel Tower has already fallen on the right hand side in favor of energy because of all the pressure that was on him earlier. Yeah, I mean, Demi just playing the Sun Wukong against Zeros on the tier, even still. Able to get off the tower. Crew. This is a wise a great call. call. Crew. They're going to use the teleport from Zeros, too. There's no tower there this time round. Demi can't force it down. And energy, well, they get caught with the pants down. Raffer are going to get pushed into trouble, flipped even further. There's a fan. Fantastic Wrath of Terra, and Emelito's going to follow that one up as well. Replicons looking for an execute. Can't bring Raffer down to 30%. Though. They need to stop chasing right now because Dimmy's here. He's going to get one thanks to the help of Emelito, and they can keep marching on. Yamin's back in the fight. Adapting's on the way, and they could li keep looking for more if they want to. Yeah, it's 10 to 4 right now. Energy have had the combat and the battle tactics all down to a science. Gangs, team fights, well, etc. The goal for you is very wise coming out there from Cringe Crew as well. We're going to see one of those groups go down. Tier 1 tower answered by, by Energy mid. But one of the issues with this game is that all this lead is on adapting. We were fantastically talking about how many of the kills he's got. You put all the kills on one guy, however, it can come back to haunt you if there's no longer on the map. A little bit. A little bit. Well, he did that. They lost, lost sure. goal for you straight after it. Even still. Uh, the Cirquet, not exactly Mr. Gold Fury Defender. True, but causes an issue for the backline to keep their eyes behind them at all times in case he's rotating around. The old variety freeze. The old variety freeze. Is that what going to be named now? We'll call it that. <laughs> I'm down. Especially you missed. I was going to play. It was like, your variety freeze? What did variety do to do with freezing? What? I mean, just made the real simple play in the right spot. You know, that sometimes that's what it takes. And like adapting, we've seen a lot of flash, but we've also seen adapting walk into a lane, throw the kiss out, and kill somebody with a zigzag, right? That's that's what, nothing, it doesn't always have to be flashy. Sometimes you just need to find the kill. That's very true, and it does not have to be flashy. Level 16, though, for him, at 13 and a half minutes, a really good advantage for him and the boys of energy. Can we just go to the graphs, because even with the Gold Fury going down here, you can still see it's climbed once again after that Gold Fury. He's still back in energy's favor. Yep, just going to keep tilted in that direction. Energy not going to let go of their lead just yet. Red buff has also been stolen away. I like this call from Repicast here. This team's behind, and who better to go for than Emelito? The guy that's more aggressive than more than likely anybody else on the map. Always generally pushed up as far as he can. Happy to take a boxing match. And if Shaggy Chen can force him into one there, it could come back to haunt him. Too bad Energy have warded up that jungle. You can Completely. see the red. You can see the little red ward right there on your mini map. So Energy right there. The old Epsilon symbol. Yeah, very deep in the jungle as well, actually. Exactly. Just keeping that vision of where he's coming from. And that's because Replica... And so, again, Energy are playing against Ao Kuang this match. All of their selections, we've talked about them. And the ward vision, having that deep ward, knowing that the Ao Kuang is going to come into lane invisible, mm -hmm. that's very important that you shift your wards. You see that a lot with Thor and Thanatos when you're playing against these selections. Now, Ratatasker, you've got a ward in different spots. Well, this doesn't surprise me. You've seen energy group on the left-hand side. Because two tier one towers are down here, energy's got to kind of mix up their game plan for this stage of the game. Yes, they've got a lead. And normally, they group up and take towers, but there's only one to focus on, which kind of gives the game away to cringe Crew, which one they're going to go for? A little bit. Mealzy dodges. He gets out of the danger of adapting's shots. Not going to be the case just yet here, folks. 15 and a half in energy leading off of a... They got off to a just a tear. Seven kills in just as many yeah. minutes out of the jungler. But now, taking a step back, but playing he's got a tactically. Death now. Deathbringer at 15 minutes with a Jotun is a nasty amount of damage to have to deal with overall. You've got to stay away from that assassin at all times. If Adapting turns up to a fight, you're on the run. The pull just off the mark. Shaggy Shank finds the backflip to safety. Emelino and the dual lane. There's a nice ultimate, but it's immediately counteracted by Emil. Look at the rotation from the team of energy here. Immediately over into the jungle. Three members strong are already there in support in case Cringe Crew were even thinking about it. That's why you saw Rafa all like that. Yep. Kind of crazy, but no, it was well executed and now five members together are waiting for an answer back from Cringe Crew who are one member short as one had to go back to base. Well, you're sitting there looking at the dual lane matchup and you're saying, hey, is it two on two? What is this, six minutes? No, it's 16. Of course, Energy have people That's in the, the jungle. Emelito, very low. The Wisps are coming through, though. Disapparate actually stopped the dot damage from coming out. Adapted takes that rapid cast and looking to get away from the team. Lawbringer off the mark from Zeros, but he Adapted will escape as Kero under pressure. Dimmy's going to look for the mid laner. Sanctuary down, stunned out. There's a good drop, but Dimmy able to take out Kiro. Doesn't for energy as Zeros exits a stage. Well, south. He's as, gone. as that happened as well, Adapted swings over, gets speed buff, and Melzi on his own gets thunder crashed on. Charges away. Root on the mark. No pull available as the juggle from Zeros is good, but Zeros just took a hell of a lot of free poke from Zero CC'd the enemy, but winds up CC'd yep. himself with his own fearless and is forced 
out of the team fight. Emilzi now hanging on for dear life as a tier two does the same for the moment. But the structure, not as structurally sound as a Sobek, and it will fall down. And that all was created from that one little skirmish over at a tier one tower. Yep. You saw Rafa use his ultimate, and immediately the rotation from energy comes in. They get two towers off that in the end, and kills in the jungle. Adapting, what did it do? Take out Repicast. Kiro, what happened to him? Well, they were all trying to catch Adapting, and when you catch Adapting, yep. you leave your front line, back line alone, and they get picked up by people like Dimmy. Yeah, that would just zoom, right? Just gone. Absolutely. That's your, that's your job as an assassin, or this, yep. this style of assassin. Very similar. Alquang's a little bit different because when you use your ultimate, you're out of combat anyway. But your job is go in, get a pick, and try and get out. Yeah, Sir Kit, these days we see Nemesis played a little bit differently, but there was a moment in time where Nemesis was very offensive. Yeah. Every item just looking for damage, and she'd come in, ultimate somebody, murder them, and then run out. This is that in-and-out style play that Adapting kind of made a name for himself on, both with the Thor, the Fenrir, and the Sir Kit when it rose to prominence, and he's doing it again. Well, they're just going to try and strip down more towers here. Mainly focus on farm, because still nobody level 20 in this game. You want to farm up at only 18 minutes in. Yes, it's in favor of energy, but it's not all over, especially after the last goal for you, go into Cringe Crew. If they do that again, it'll answer some of this lead back once more. A little bit. You can see the lead is certainly large at 7,000, but Cringe Crew, like you said, have taken a Gold Fury. Certainly still in their repertoire. Cringe Crew, I mean, you just you can't forget about game number one. Cringe Crew are totally mm -hmm. ready, willing, and want to come right on back. It's, it's more difficult as the game goes on in the early stages like this to actually try and find more of a lead, you know? For sure. Find an opportunity. Energy have a huge lead right now. But the only problem is, is they've only got two towers to focus on now and any objectives that spawn. And when the Gold Fury is up, they have to look at that, which forces Cringe Crew out. And it's the only way they can fire the fight. Emilzi shows his face and everybody on Energy just going to collapse on him. Pull off the mark again. Raffer. Really not able to find those pulls, but his ultimates out. have been important. And look at the position of Cringe Crew at the back here. They're worried about where Adapting is, and Adapting, just keeping it busy. He's been annoying more than if it's however, this is an opportunity. Gold Fury, 25%. There's the ultimate out of Soul. Backflip out of Shaggy Shank, and everybody walks away Kiro. from the gold. There's a rather Terra knocking Shaggy in the sky. Backflip is down. So is Kiro. Emelito gets credit for it. Can't run away from me. Adapting gets a kill as Shaggy Shank drops. And meanwhile, Zeros did teleport in there. Couldn't get there in time and realized if I even Go in here, I'm dead too. So he manages to hold off for now, but looking for the steal. Zero's over the top, gets the fearless power cleave onto two. Not gonna find the damage enough to kill, but there's the follow up. Zero's pushed back and pushed down. And 16. Look at Al Kwong. Repi sat there and he waited for Zero's to do that, looking to try and get a cleanup kill that could have become two, that could have become three. But instead, Sanctuary, immediately after the burst comes out, no pick. Four members die on Cringe Crew, and energy continues. Well, if you do, well, on the Al Kwong, it's so easy. The, it's so easy to get pushed to a point where you're just irrelevant in these team fights. I mean, Repi can barely secure his own speed buff. Energy, you're going for the fire. They are going for the fire, and it's pretty much free here already. Look at the respawn times on most of them. They're, sorry, well, most of it's only zeros, actually. No teleport for him to get back. No global presence to really get in here and steal this one away. Energy completely exploit that last team fight of the Gulf Fury. This is what we this is what we were talking about during Picks and Mans. Before, before we even started, like, assessing I the knew, game, yeah. and you and I were just talking about judging from the history of these players, right? You know, our, our just the old man being here for a while, the history of the game. I said 20 minutes, right? Now, obviously, 20 minute winning the game is pretty rough, but energy, the the quickness that they came out of the gates, just running like evil could evil out of a cannon. I mean, that's that's you that's what happens. You mentioned the quickness, adapting, hit five, rotated right, get exactly, a kill. and that's, then from yeah. there, he just continued, click, click, click. Is my old up? Yes, get a pick. Is my old up? Yes, get a pick. Mm -hmm. Over and over again. This leap is up. He's got five levels over Repicas now. And to be fair to Repicas, he's not had a bad game on the Al Kwong whatsoever. He's just been an Al Kwong, you know. He's not been. He's not going to manage to get to the mid game as quick and. So Kat just run the game because of it. Right, and that's, that's, that's what we mean when we say set the pace of the game. It's become such a cliche, but it's very important. Adapting just got off to the first step and the second step and the third step and the fourth step before Repikas even put his shoes on. And now because of the sustain from a Sylvanas on top, this just allows him with a fire gem to get these tier two towers uncontested at 20 minutes in. It's not that Cringe Crew couldn't look to fight this. It's just that the fight against a fire giant yeah, team right. with sustain from the Wisps is just too much. Dimmy's going to go ahead and split push on the other other side now rejoin his team as energy looking towards the phoenix zero's lurking in the wings and demi's gonna spot him out smack yeah. him in the face and this slow him down this jumping forward is adapting there's the taunt so as well 
so wise. Force zeros out, and even the blink from Rafa is wise too. One of the front line is down from Cringe Cruise, which causes so many issues for this team. I was going to say zeros needs to be with this team, and it's wise for him to come to the team. But at the same time, Energy realized how important he would be in the next fight. Just Dimmy playing it safe, splitting away from the team, searching for the one that's missing. Half a minute sitting down is zeros. Fire Giant in tow. Energy, five players strong, looking for the Phoenix on the left-hand side. And now he's going to be able to go in for Emilzy as well. Forced out, but straight to the back goes Adaptin, looking for the pickup kill. He does get bursted heavily for it, and he will get his Sanctuary off in time, though, to survive as the first Phoenix in this game falls. Three players left. Oh, Make that it. two players left to play defense. Hindu man, right side Phoenix, gone. Mid Phoenix, absolutely annihilated. And the shift over to the left-hand side will be the last structure remaining for Cringe Crew. Easy peasy, Emil Squeezy. That's what it kind of feels like for me right now. Mid lane, pressure onto Dimmy, who's not worried with his clone available. He's just buying time for the energy boys to pick up the final Phoenix of this game, and they can just swing back to base here. Yeah, energy going to play it safe. They're going to head to base, spend the golden hand. 2K for the three on top, adapting wants to seal the speed well, and this is a personal this is a prime example as well after when i talk about them being a car and like gears right second gear is oh, where yeah. we see energy play however now and again you'll make them bump up a gear or two i'd say this is maximum fourth gear really i'd say this is maximum fourth gear that's how, how many gears your car got five 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 gears maximum fourth gear this not six no five Energy's a supercar. They got six gears. No, Come on now. No, turbo boost. That's what you're talking about. But yeah, I feel like this is this is them going to fourth gear right I now. I feel you on that. Stepping it up a little bit more. I definitely feel there's more in the tank, you know? Oh, with that. I mean, you can see that straight from the get-go, they built a composition to just beat out Kwong. The draft, mm -hmm. the gameplay, the game plan, Everything about this was executed from the top down to put Al Kwong down for the I, count. I do want to see a comp drafted, though, from the opposition to deal with the Sir Cat next time around as well. Maybe you put the Al Kwong for yourself Play because energy give you and, and work around that. Know that you're going to get a Sir Cat against you. Kira caught mid-dash by Dimmy with the hot hands. Hot. Beautiful play. Now looking forward is Yaman. Looking for the kill onto the Hunter. Um, one shot, two shot, three shot, blue shot. Yaman gets the kill. Four kills on one side. And energy dwarfing them with 20. Three Phoenixes are down. One player is down for Cringe Crew. And energy got five. Five minutes to the left of me. Five minutes to the right. Here is energy right in the middle looking for the end of game two. Raffer drops the ultimate. Titan going to go down. And there goes the battle. Energy still bringing it and answers back in 24 minutes of combat. The Order Titan going to fall down here and Energy get beat in game one, but they certainly don't get beat in game two. Fantastic set from Cringe Crew, though, because especially after the performances they've put in the last couple of weeks and the fact they've not found wins, that one point is so very vital to them against mm. such tough opposition. I mean, tough opposition, absolutely. And for me, it's not even about the points, Hindu. It's not even about the points. Don't forget, every single team makes it to land. These points are here to seed the land. Every team is learning. And it's about the points when you get to the middle of the pack. But when you're playing against energy, when you're playing against hunger for more, when you're playing against paradigm, it's about what you take home and what you take with you. Tell you what, though, I don't think anyone would have called that. After seeing the performances so far from these two teams this split, I don't think anyone would have expected Cringe Crew to take a game off them, off of energy. No, just out of control. And again, it was just Repikaz playing in game number one, really yep. bringing everything to allow Cringe Crew to win that. But Repikaz's performance, well, I think it just made adapting really mad. Repikaz playing in the one, Cubs. Adapting game two, the tale of two junglers and the performances they had. And this, well, this was already after first blood. This was the second kill of the game. Yeah, just right after it. Keep a look on the. I won't, but as we go over these adapting kills, look at the clock time on here. Yeah. Number two comes at four minutes. Here's the follow. This was the double kill uh, for the jungler, and he's able to just find another one. Good work from them as well. And there is the post-game stats for you boys and girls at home. We're very interested in this one. You can see pretty much tell of the tape is all the damage is on the side of the winners, shockingly enough. There it is. Energy just bringing it home, adapting, sitting 4,000 above his opposition in the jungle. And then, of course, the mid-majors doing it when it counts as well. Bringing back those map efficiency numbers. Remember, the median that you're looking for is really about 60-61. So energy taking a step above. And if you don't actually see the, the efficiency there being quite high for energy, we well, can see how low it was for the side of Cringe Crew. And that's because of the pressure that was put onto them by the boys of energy. Just tough stuff all across the board coming out from... 
map official from from Cringe Crew versus Energy. Lovely game right there. It was a know. great set overall, honestly. So there's some of the best of Cringe Crew, some of the best out of uh, Energy at some point to that as well. But it makes a very fun. Some of the best out of Cringe Crew as well, taking game one to the bank. And like I said a million and one times, Repikas really enabled his team to do that. And because of that, we've got him on the line. Congratulations on your split today, Repi. How you feeling? Hey. Uh, it feels pretty good. Feels pretty good? Uh, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> it is late for it the European like guys. Point. I appreciate you hanging out and staying up here with us. But reflect back on that set. Obviously, game two didn't go the same way. But game number one, uh, you guys were neck and neck with energy and even wound up winning. Uh, and like I said, pretty much off of the back of your own play. How does that feel to take down the number one team? It feels pretty good, but in the second game, just couldn't do anything. I had too many counter picks. Yeah, the whole game through. I mean, that rat to Tosca pick for yourself, though, Repicast, when I'm looking at it, what's the reason for the rat? Do you feel do you just like him right now? You seem to be one of the better players on it. Uh, mainly because I didn't want to play Fenrir, the Bands, <laughs> Humbats, and the Willix. Okay. Makes sense, and man. I just. We played Red a few times and worked out. Yeah, no, it certainly worked out. Seems to keep the team uh, up going and full of, well, I was going to say energy, but yeah, no I was energy too. I don't think Reppy's got any right now. <laughs> but uh, fantastic play, like we said. You guys really brought it in game number one and I think showed some of the shining points of what this team can do. Any shout-outs to give to the people at home before we let you go? Uh, a shout-out to Harris David. That's it. Excellent. Always got to give a shout out to the Mr. Ugly Cat Lady himself. Thanks again, Rampikas, for joining us one more time. Jungler for Cringe Crew and pretty much the, the sole proprietor of win number one. Saturday night and he's that tired. Saturday night and he's that tired. They really? went pretty hard. You know where else they party hard? Where? High Res Expo. HighResExpo.com. You can get your own tickets for our world's event. You, you salesman. I do it. You sell out. I, I love sell out. I love the segue into, into this one. That was a good segue. However, if you do want to buy your tickets, head over to HarrisExpo.com and you can get your tickets there for that event. Also, uh, I get two gem commissions, so drop my name. Okay. I don't need gems. I've seen my account. I get as many gems as I want. <laughs> but that's it from Europe for today. However, tomorrow is Sunday, and guess what we've got coming there? F dot. What we got? We've got some North American action for you. A bunch of different teams are going to go head-to-head -head for the best of North America. We'll see on the Sunday matches, Denial taking on Envy, Eager taking on Allegiance, the Clowns will fight against Soar, and Enemy take on Lumi. Good real games between the two of them there. I think I'm really looking at the Luminosity versus Envy. One Ooh. could be quite spicy between those two. We'll find out, though, because a lot of fan favorites at home for those. Man, it should be a lot of fun. Man, even these games today were a lot of fun. We had four good sets. I want you to pick one good moment. What's your favorite? Cringe crew beating energy. Absolutely. It's hot. <laughs> I don't think anybody. It's that simple. I don't think anybody in chat's gonna say anything different. Wonderful to see games like that, and we hope to see some more tomorrow. For myself, Kevin, Anatoly, Hindu man, and even Peckies. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. I was about to punch you, thinking I was Kevin. <laughs>